We shall see. This is the most remarkable experiment I think that I've ever done. I'll balance that, first of all, like a seesaw. So there is a balance point. When I take this out here, of course, then the balance point is uh, upset, it should tip down. We know that given the opportunity, it's going to do this if it can, but now we've balanced it, and we've balanced it about its centre of mass. So that if this gyro transfers its mass centre to the pivot, it should stay balanced. The question is, will it? Let those who say I cannot make a body appear lighter than it is, come and pull holes in that one. We shall yeah, oh, that, was, that, was, uh, that was quite an interesting little demonstration, oh, was it? Yeah, just uh, play back what he says, uh, uh, the last bit that he said. Very play important. That. Listen again. Let those who say I cannot make a body appear lighter than it is, come and pull holes in that one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. They can't, yeah. they can't disprove him. Nobody can disprove Eric, Eric Lathwaite and his uh, his unexpected. Uh, uh, yeah. He's made an object appear lighter than it actually is. Absolutely, yeah, it was clear. It's, it's, which reminds us of uh, very tasty him putting that and Lathwaite doing that. <laughs> <laughs> May the gyro be with you, Luke. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Because it must have been lighter. It must have felt lighter for people to be able to uh, lift these things up. So I would agree with Lathwaite in that there must be something else that science can't quantify or grasp to do with mass. Especially when... There's got to be something else there, hasn't there? Yeah, but especially when the mass is in motion. Absolutely. Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Yeah, well, we're back again. Annoying people with our views and opinions because... Oh, because loads of people really dislike hearing other people's views and opinions. Yeah, this is so true. And uh, after doing a, having exchanged a bit of banter with uh, Jim from Chiapas and uh, Night, Night Hawk in, Day Hawk. in Day Hawk in Night Light Day uh, Pigeon. With Pigeon. Um, yeah, they've, they've, gotten, they've gotten totally pissed off with you and me, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, we're still waiting for a comment to a, re a post to reply, but I don't think they're going to re reply to us anymore. No, no. They've gotten tired because they know they can't win the they can't win the argument. Well, it's not an argument. Well, they can't they win can't the discussion. Up, they can't come up with the goods. They can't come up with the goods. goods. They cannot prove beyond any doubt whatsoever that water is hydrogen and oxygen. oxygen. It's simple as that. Same with chemistry science. He couldn't do it. He yeah. could not prove it. He admitted yeah. it as well. Yeah. Oh, so who's next on the uh, on the list? Yeah, but chemistry science was only saying, but I can't do it with the facility that I have because he's got this dream about buying. Well, so it is hydrogen. He's got a dream about buying some better equipment and some bigger laboratory and. I thought he was going to say about buying. Some, got a dream about, about buying, buying some, some land. land. Yeah. Going <laughs> to give up the booze and the one night <laughs> stands. Yeah. Absolutely, of course. But uh, yeah, how are you, Peter? Are you well? Are you well, or are you well? Well. I'm I'm absolutely very well actually. Yeah, wasn't it a good score the other night? I, was, eh? I, I just I just couldn't believe it. I was hoping because on our last video we were going, yeah, come on, Denmark. Yeah, and Denmark <sighs> didn't beat in England. Yeah, but it, uh, Italy did. Italy did, and I have to say that was one of the 
I, Mark, I've got nothing against. I'm not uh, racist in any shape or form, but from a that performance, per, for, from a performance point of view, Marcus Rashford, I think he did one of the best. Took one of the best penalties in the entire tournament. Yeah, I think he did. But I think one he, of the best. Penalties. He, he did really, really well. I mean, you know, um, I, I, I think, I think that yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, of course, but uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm so I was very pleased that Italy won anyway. Yeah, and, you know, and I don't support England football team at all. Never, yeah. never will do. You know, and when you when you consider that uh, someone, excuse the pun, trashed his uh, his mural that's his, on the oh, side in, of the in building, Whittington. In Whittington, you kind of like think you know well, they're, they're the kind of English people that I I'm ashamed. To, that makes me ashamed to be English. Yeah. I mean, there was no, really there was nothing. I think he did his best. He did his best under the circumstances. Yeah. You know, okay, you know, okay, okay. He didn't. He didn't get the ball in the net. Okay, right. Okay, that's fair. But he did his best. Yeah, no, he did. Yeah. He did more than what a lot of people did. You know, I mean, we've got to give him uh, his credit. So anyway. we want more of him. We want yeah. more. Yeah, come on, Mark. he should come appear. On. He should be captain of the England team. Yeah, shouldn't yeah. he? At least. Yeah, of course. But, but yeah, great, great, great score great, for that. Great, great, great performance, performance by uh, by England. Great yeah, performance great by performance. England, yeah. by the England team. And uh, there we go. So, so there we go. So yeah. what? Um, yeah. So what have we got on for everyone's displeasure then for tonight? Then, Peter? Well, I, have to, I have to say that the one reason why, very quickly, I have to say one reason why we did we don't follow England, we don't support England, is because we consider. We both consider this country could be so much better for everybody if people started changing their mindsets and were more considerate of other people. Absolutely, yeah, of course, yeah. We we, we don't, but uh, they're not. Yeah, it's, yeah. English people are, uh, yeah, they're very. Uh, they're blighted. They 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 lie blighted. and cheat. Yeah, don't they? they don't, I mean, well, look at uh, look at. You've only got to look at. Yeah, and they, they don't hold up. They don't. They're not true to their words. Word. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's yeah. another thing with English people. Yeah. You know, especially anyway. when you look at Boris Johnson's uh, hash of the Northern Ireland Protocol. Well, his know. protocol. Well, it's not anyway, his it's protocol. Not but, you know. politics. Yeah, but if you sign, if you sign an agreement, you should uphold that agreement because yeah, you've certainly. signed that agreement. Yeah, especially. that's, that's what your job is. If your job is to sign agreements on behalf of the nation, then you shouldn't rescind on that agreement. Especially an agreement that you've. Drawn up, more or less. Absolutely, of course. Anyway, come on. But uh, it does make you realise what a lot of people are like in this country, True, you know, yeah. in England. And, you know, the pitfall. But, yeah. you know, there you go. Hey-ho. Hey-ho. Come on. Sure, of course. Anyway, but anyway, so what have we got on for everyone's displeasure for tonight then, Peter? Well, for everyone's displeasure, we're going to cover a couple of comments from our previous video because we got some uh, good comments from our previous video that we'd like to highlight to lots of people. We're going to have a look at um, this as well. The big hydrogen question. question. The big. It's the big. the big one. Yeah, the big hydrogen question. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And this this is really the main the main topic of, of the video. Yeah, this is the main this is the main topic of the video because after doing our last video and introducing um, what was it? Having our having our little exchanges with Dayhawk, Pigeon, Light, Night Like, Quick Fix, um, whatever, um, it made us realise that um, a few things about the electrolysis process, water, the claim water being hydrogen and oxygen, and also the hydrogen production, and also hydrogen production. So we thought what we'd do is we thought we'd do a video centred mainly around the big hydrogen question. And the big hydrogen question is... Well, we'll cover that in a minute, once we've minute. done the comments. Absolutely, of course. So uh, so we're going we're to so do that. Come on, that. let's get on. That's and it, that's all we're going to do. Oh, right, okay, yeah. And we're going to cover a few comments as well. Yeah, but um, on our last video, let's, let's cover the comments. So let's leave Eric Laithwaite alone yeah. on our last video. On our last here. video. Just a, a couple of comments. Petro. Because we covered the, the the motorcycle guy. <laughs> yeah, we covered uh, this this guy here. You know, everyone saw him. Yeah, yeah the guy Mr. there with his handlebars, moustache. Yeah, yeah he's, true, he's probably a Harley Harley man. No, probably, yeah. He's Harley not a BSA Davis, Bantam man, is he? Yeah. But anyway, Petro twenty two. 
when the moustache guy blows the water and says it's carbon dioxide, shouldn't he say that he added oxygen? I would only say this because the water went from neutral pH to an acid pH. Mm. And the original meaning of oxygen is acid generation. Yeah. Is, so Petro's acid got a, a acid former. Point. Oxy, acid, gen, former. Yeah. Acid, former. Or have I missed something? Yeah, but another thing with oxygen, and that is, or the heat, heat does heat make a difference. The to, calorific value to pH. But anyway. By the way, I love your work, guys. Every time I watch your video, it just shows that belief is the enemy of knowing. Absolutely. Because a lot yeah. of people believe things to be true. Or when they're not. When they're not true. So. When they can't prove to be true. So I replied to him, good point about oxygen and the pH levels, but one can firmly conclude there's no carbon dioxide gas in exhaled breath. Because nobody can prove it. Yeah, nobody, nobody can prove it at all. Nobody can prove it. Or they can demonstrate a certain indicator's pH, pH tests or using uh, lime water. But a pH is all about or salt blowing, acid. Or blowing out a flame even. <sighs> but you've got stale air anyway. You anyway. Got, absolutely, of course, yeah. It could well be, and probably more likely, that exhaled breath condensate contains other substances that clearly lower the pH of water. No point saying it's due to CO2 unless that can be demonstrated. demonstrated. Absolutely, of course. Thanks for your comment. So he's put, could it be possible that a person who is unhealthier than another, like Mr. <laughs> may be producing acidic substances from their breath? Looking at the moustache guy, he doesn't seem to be the type who considers his health. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, when you do look at... Uh, Spot on. Let's, let's have a little look at him. We'll, yeah. we'll just switch the volume off. But if you look at him, he does look a bit unhealthy. His hair's a bit... His hair's a bit greasy. It looks yeah, as no, if he yeah. uh, hits the moonshine, you know. Put on a bit of weight, you know, Puts, weight around his tyre. Motorcycle so, tyre around his waist. Absolutely. So it could well be that when you're unhealthy, you're, you're the... The homeostasis. You, your, well, your homeostatic levels would like go all over the place and you, you, you might be producing more... Um, more more mock in your exhaled breath condensate well, anyway, come on. than someone who is healthy. Get back to the comment. But it, it was a good point that he made, and it, even it was a point that I would I would go with as well. Yeah, come on, let's get back to the comment. I'm, I'm there, wait there. So, spot on. It was amazing how he got the pH down to five, five when blowing through the straw. Yet if you place a wet litmus paper over the CO2 from vinegar reacting with sodium bicarbonate, it would only go down to a pH of 6. Yeah, which does make... Yeah, absolutely, of course. So yeah. how can he be producing carbon dioxide when there's a difference yeah. in the pH? Yeah, how can he lower that pH right down to 5? Yeah. yeah, what's more, taken from Wiki, exhaled breath condensate reflects not only the composition of the airway lining fluid and alveoli. EBC, exhaled breath condensate, may also mix with salivary and gastric droplets. Droplets, yeah. In addition, volatile gases, they don't say what type... Which ones arising from the alveoli, lower and upper airway, wall, as well as oral cavity, dissolve into the exhaled water vapour and influence its pH. Yeah, well, there you go. Look, you've so got it's very clear that other acidic forces are at play to help reduce pH, pH levels, levels in the breath. Absolutely, of course. Putting it down solely to CO2 is clearly misleading the issue. Yeah. And just patients with gastro -es -es esophageal, esophageal reflux yeah. disease have been demonstrated to have pepsin usually localised to the stomach in the EBC, which is acidic. Yeah, you know, that, well, for people to think that uh, we, we exhale CO2, and you can demonstrate that by clearly blowing into water and, and testing that water and the pH lowers. And it's only that CO2 you know, that changes the pH, nothing else. Yeah. Only that CO2. That, that, that's absolutely... You know, th there's evidence here that shows that uh, yeah. it, it's, it could be something else. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's you know, that one. If you do think you'd breathe out CO2... Yeah, so thanks, Petro, for that comment. Very good. Um, got a comment about petroleum, which is further down. Is it not? Petroleum, right there. Yeah, probably. Petroleum. 19. No, it's the next December one 19. Yeah, here we go. 19th December 19th. What's petroleum? Well, petroleum. So we replied, this is our current understanding of what petroleum is. Petroleum is water 
that's been super saturated with a mixture of chemicals and a dissolved rock mineral layer. Yeah. In other words, man injects chemicals into the ground to dissolve rock mineral layer, layer and then brings it back up to the surface to refine. Yeah. That's our opinion on what petroleum or crude oil is. And the stuff that comes up is mixed is basically mixed with um, steam. Yeah. And it becomes super saturated in the distillation column. Which is why they're able to thin it out. Which is why they're oh, yeah. able to... Which is part of, the, part of the process of refining it. Which is part of the refining the of the of the crude oil, yeah. of course. But uh, that's what we think... Uh, that's our view on... Uh, yeah, and petroleum, and petroleum is not naturally occurring. Yeah, petroleum is not naturally petroleum. occurring. But it does contain water. Mm. Pe petrol. Petrol contains... All, f all liquid fuels contain water. So, yeah. Which is why you have water... Coming out of your exhaust pipe of your car. Which is why you have your absolutely, internal of combustion engine. Yeah, absolutely, of course. Or your motorcycle. Yeah. You have water coming out of it because there's yeah. water in the fuel. Absolutely, of course. Because water is the energy carrier. Water is the energy carrier. Exactly, of course. And I've, I've got to say, and that's why you get uh, water when you light your gas stove. You, you get water condensing on the walls and windows yeah. in your kitchen. Because, well, you're the, because the fuel... Contains water. Yeah, absolutely. The and fuel also contains water. even your Calagas. Your Calagas bottles have got water in it. Yeah. You know, there's there's water in a lot of fuels, liquid fuels. Yeah. All of them in Oh, well, yeah, because your Calagas, if you if you move the, the cylinder around, it feels as if it's got... Well, a liquid It inside. feels as if there's, there's liquid inside, but you've got to remember it's highly compressed, which is and, why it feels as though and, there's a liquid. Yeah, but the, the water itself has been super saturated... Absolutely. By the impurities, which one would call the gas. Mm. So when you switch the open the valve up to the cylinder, it'll all evaporate. Yeah, absolutely, of course. So um, you know, that's uh, that's you so know. So that's our that, take on. That's, that's our, our opinion. opinion. That's our opinion on, on petrol. Petrol. And that's our opinion on exhaled breath condensate and carbon dioxide and in exhaled breath. And, oh, 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 right, oh, and there was a, an Arnold Clark comment as well on this one. Oh dear, look at this, we're going to get Because he the had the pleasure of talking to someone who worked oh. in the airline industry. Yeah, because we mentioned about our views on uh, high bypass turbofans. And, uh, Come on, I'm Yeah, I've got to find it right there. And uh, he... There you go. Here we go. Arnold Clark writes, Jet Engines, while staying in Southport, the hotel owner, owner's husband, worked at BAE as an engineer on wings. What was that, Paul McCartney? Oh, could have been, could have been a sound engineer for Paul yeah, McCartney. Yeah. Questions I asked him: When I'm on a large plane, why does it only take a twenty thousand litre tanker to fill it, although it requires three hundred thousand litres to get to the states? How does the seven four seven wing made of made of aluminium hold one hundred forty seven thousand litres of fuel? That's three hundred tons extra the plane has to lift. Wow. He said it doesn't, then had the most perplexed look on his face. face. Oh dear. Absolutely, you, you know. Yeah, and we replied, yeah, I can probably imagine the look on his face. Asking the simplest of question or questions dumbfounds many. Absolutely, of course, yeah, of course, yeah. All you've got to do is ask the simplest, simplest of questions, questions, you yeah. know. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it's more than possible that uh, our, our opinion on high bypass turbo fans not using fuel all of the time um it's, it's quite uh, quite feasible you know yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that's, that's what it's you know if somebody showed us some uh, proof to show that we our opinion was wrong then we'd change our opinion wouldn't yeah. we of course yeah. but until then it's still an opinion yeah but we are we're, but we have seen uh, uh, a takeoff of uh Antonov, haven't we? Antonov, and yeah. you can quite clearly see that the there are um, like exhaust plumes, exhaust plumes fuel being burned coming off from the on takeoff, on takeoff, on takeoff, of which course. would indicate that they are burning fuel. They are burning fuel, but it could well be that at certain points um, during flight they don't use fuel. They don't burn fuel because yeah. yeah. they don't need to. So, yeah, because the engines are so finely tuned. That they are very, very, very um, efficient, efficient, yeah, and don't require uh, fuel. Yeah.
But that's our opinion. That's our opinion, of course. If you think we're wrong, you know, join us in a Zoom meeting. And that reminds us, of course. That reminds us, of course. Yeah. There we go, yeah. Zoom in with Pete and Pete, yeah. If you think our views and opinions are totally wrong and you think you're right, you think you've got the proof, you think you've got what it takes. You think you've got the goods to deliver You think you're better than Night Hawk in daylight. Oh, you think you've got the goods to deliver that winning penalty. Absolutely. You think you're better than Jim from Chiapas. You think you're better than Chemistry Science. Yeah. If you think you're better than these people, come along to Zoom. We dare you. Mm. And uh, have a chat with us and show us your proof that disproves any of our views and opinions. And yeah. uh, well, what we'll do is we'll take down any video where you, you where you can show us proof, and that we're obviously wrong. shows to everyone that we're, we're wrong, wrong. That yeah. our opinions are wrong. We we'll gladly take yeah, them down. Come on. And if you don't want to do a Zoom, we'll do a Discord. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do a Discord and with you. If you don't you. want to do a Discord, we'll do a Telegram. With we'll you. do a Telegram with you. In if fact, you we'll do anything, anything with, with you. you. Just so you get the opportunity to prove us wrong. Mm. Of course. And that's irrespective of who you are. That's irrespective of who you are. But uh, obviously there's there's people been before you. So be warned and they've fallen. Of course. At the first hurdle. Absolutely, absolutely, of course. But uh, so that thank you ever so much for those 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 guys. For those comments, it's been really good. And uh, what are we on to now then, Peter? We're on our main topic. Are we on our main topic already? We're actually on our main topic. We're on the big... The big... The big... Hydrogen, hydrogen question. Yes, it's the big hydrogen question. Now, the big hydrogen question. Yeah, a lot of... And now, a lot of people... Th- I know a lot, what a lot of people are thinking. It's got something to do with water, hasn't it? Oh, has it though? Well, yeah, possibly, mm. but uh, yeah, well, has it, yeah. Mm. See, a lot of people think, obviously, that water's made of hydrogen and oxygen. oxygen. Nighthawk in daylight, he thinks that uh, he thinks that water's... He claimed in his video that water's made of hydrogen and oxygen. Yeah. Jim from Chi- you can Chihuahua. Split water. Jim from Chihuahua. Jim from Chiapas. Yeah, he thinks water is made of hydrogen he and thinks, oxygen. He thinks... Only think, they only think, these guys yeah, only, only think, think. okay... But the big thing is, is water made of hydrogen and oxygen? I mean, we don't think it is. We haven't thought water's made well, of hydrogen I think, and oxygen I think really for, a long for, time. The, for the big hydrogen question, what I think we need to do is that we need we should to go, go back, back in, in time. Go back in time. And we need to revisit uh, our favourite Frenchman. Monsieur, Monsieur Antoine, Antoine Lavoisier. Lavoisier. The father of modern day chemistry. chemistry. And he also has a des amis. Des amis, euh, amis, et Musnier, Musnier, Monsieur Musnier. Musnier. Yeah, now this is this is a little diagram. I, th- I quite like well, the really, diagram. Well, really, you well, should pick go on that history of hydrogen okay. production. Okay, let's go. Really. Let, let's go on that. Uh, wait there, hold on. You should go on that one. Yeah, now yeah. taming hydrogen. Yeah, you can go on here. Yeah, go, go on, on this now, first. Now this is a very good article. Taming hydrogen: the road to practical hydrogen applications. We're on the it's road a very good to article. Um, now uh, let's have a little look. Where do we need to go? Yeah, we need to go after that one. Now that this is a pa- patent somebody made made for a hydrogen combustion engine. Mm. Okay, which was done in. Um, 1939, 1939 that was but anyway major milestones in hydrogen production Here now we you've got to remember people always bear this in mind some people think that water, hydrogen water can be split into hydrogen and oxygen okay we on the other hand Peter and myself don't think that's true no. and the hydrogen and oxygen comes from somewhere else okay that you've always got to bear that in no, mind not the water so, so it took over a century to realise... You don't need that. Well, you just, yeah. just get into it. It took over a century to realise that Boyle's gas was more than a fleeting byproduct of a metal acid reaction. 1781, people should know this who watch this channel, Henry Cavendish yeah. discovered that hydrogen was a unique element, not just a substance, which he had successfully isolated 20 years yeah, earlier. Cavendish thought that hydrogen was phlogiston at the time. Absolutely. 
Yeah. But the following decade saw the genesis of three early methods to produce hydrogen that are still used today. today. They even some, use them today. Some no. 230 years yeah. later. Yeah, the first process was developed by was developed in 1784 by Antoine Lavoisier, the French chemist, mm. who replicated Cavendish's laboratory experiments and named the new element hydrogen. And Charles, Charles Musnier. Musnier. Known as the Lavoisier Musnier process, hydrogen was formed by heating an iron cannon to 600 degrees centigrade and then passing steam through its red hot barrel. The steam iron method endured until the 20th century when a more cost effective method was introduced, known as steam reforming. Oh, you've got a link to that steam iron method there. Oh, yeah, wait there. I didn't realise there was a mm. steam iron method, yeah. You've probably got. No, that's. Oh, oh no, 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 that's rubbish. Anyway, so this takes us back to here. Now, this is a little diagram of probably something Lavoisier would have done, carried out with Musnier in order to have produced hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's very, very simple. So on the right here, you've got your glass retort, which is filled with water being heated on a little stove to produce steam. steam. And G is your iron rod. Your iron or pipe, can, your cannon, or whatever cannon, you want to use. Iron pipe, and the iron pipe is housed in a little small, in a small furnace, which is obviously heating the iron. Okay, um, and then what's attached to that is a condensing uh, coil. There's a coil of a uh, cold, cold, cold pipe, obviously in cold water, mm -hmm. and out of that. Um, there's a, there's J, which is a collecting jar to collect all of your liquid water, water that's condensed from the steam. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then out of the top of that, you've got a pipe that goes into probably a mercury, oh, probably yeah. uh, filled basin with a jar on the top to collect your hydrogen. Mm. Now, In very your very jar. simple. Yeah, very very simple um, kit. You know, very very simple. Now. The big question. The big hydrogen this question. This is the big hydrogen big question. question. Does the hydrogen come from the water or contained in the flask in I? I, yeah, absolutely, of course. You can, you can uh, maximise the Oh, we can maximise the image here. Look, here yeah. we go, look. There we go. There's the little flask, the retort. <clears throat> Does this the hydrogen come from the water that's in this glass flask bearing or... In, oh, bearing in mind... That the water is meant to split into hydrogen yeah. and oxygen. We're told water splits yeah. into hydrogen and oxygen. Or is the hydrogen part of the metal iron pipe? pipe. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the big, super, super, super huge question. question. Mm. This the, is the big, super duper yeah. huge question. You and I both think, both consider that the hydrogen originates from G, from the iron... From the pipe. From the decomposition of the iron pipe. pipe by the steam. By the steam. We've well, got to remember that water, the steam, will break down the... The hot steam will break down the um, iron, iron pipe. pipe. The inside of the iron pipe. Mm. And thereby releasing, in our opinion, thereby releasing hydrogen. hydrogen. Mm. Okay. Mm. It's, it's very simple to understand. Yeah. No, nobody needs a, brain, uh, a, a whole uh, PhD in chemistry Industry. to understand that at yeah. all. Now go back onto the 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 there uh, the I. Now mainstream says that the hydrogen comes from the water because the water, as it turns into steam within the glass flask, and goes through the pipe, the water is split into hydrogen, hydrogen and, and oxygen. oxygen. The oxygen part of the water is meant to react with the iron pipe, which causes, which creates iron oxide within the pipe. And then the hydrogen would pass through hydrogen. into the collecting vessel Absolutely. at the very end. Through the condensing coil and then through the... Uh, through J. Through and J. Into K. And then into K. K. Absolutely, of course. But the thing is, is that now, well, if we look at this, if we look at the whole setup here, 
there's nothing in the setup that actually proves where the hydrogen is coming from. Whether it is coming from the actual water being split or whether it's actually coming from, from the, the iron, from the actual metal mm. itself, the metal pipe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing there. So on that, and Lavoisier thought that water was made of hydrogen and oxygen, did he not? Yeah. So Lavoisier, at the time of carrying out this demonstration, thought in his mind that water is being split and that hydrogen wasn't coming from the iron. Mm. But what did he do to ascertain that water was being split? Mm. Because one of the things is with this is that... Uh, he didn't do anything. Well, yeah. All he did was collect the gas. All he the did was collect gas. gas. Now, he may have measured the amount of water that came into the glass, into the vessel J. He could have done. Collected into the vessel J, because in theory, it should be the same. What's in I should be the same as what's in J. However, there will always be water remaining in that iron pipe. Well, there would always be. There's yeah. also steam because you're thinking about you think of the temperatures within that iron pipe. G, six hundred degrees so, centigrade. Yeah, about that probably. It, yeah, the steam is already being heated in the glass beyond its critical temperature. temperature. Yeah, the, the steam is being heated beyond its critical temperature in G, so it will actually pass through J and into K. So within yeah. K, there will be some water. There will be some water gas. Water gas. Absolutely, of course, yeah. So now, so he's actually converting some of the water into a gas. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Through this process. Through this process. So it's quite course. easy for Lavoisier to think sure. that the hydrogen's coming from the water. Because yeah, there's course. water loss. There's water loss, yeah. But, uh, I mean, that would be uh, one little bit. So so let's let's just go... So just bear that in mind. Okay, right. So let's just, get, just carry on a bit. Now, the, a second process was introduced in 1789 when Jan Rudolf Diamond and Adrian Peit van Trutstu or whatever induced electrolysis using an electrostatic machine and a Leyden jar. A year later, two English scientists, here we go, William, William Nicholson, Nicholson and Sir Anthony Carlyle, hit upon the fundamental principle of electrolysis by applying an electric current to split water molecules into hydrogen and oxygen. Johann Wilhelm Richter refined their methodology so he could collect the oxygen and hydrogen as separate gases. However, it would take a hundred years before electrolysis was used in industrial applications. Okay, so you've now got the electrolysis hmm. having been formulated. Okay, but with our little conversation with Nighthawk in daylight, hmm. okay, Yep. and Jim Chiarpus, they can't prove that in an electrolytic process, the gas products come from the water, water. being split. Yeah. Okay, so we should look at our little diagram, should we? Yeah, not? hold on, I just really want to uh, just cover this next part. And that is around this time, Thaddeus S.C. Lowe was working on a new water gas process, which drew upon the core principles of water gas reaction, discovered by Italian physicist Felice Fontana. Sounds like Wayne Fontana. Yeah, sure. Where's the mind benders? In 1780, Lowe's method passed high pressure steam over hot coal to produce large amounts of hydrogen gas. Yeah. It's very similar to Lavoisier Misnier. Very hot similar. Steam Absolutely, of course. Through an, an iron, iron pipe. pipe. Absolutely, of course, yeah. This process evolved and became a separate and significant method for the production of hydrogen, known as coal gasification, which yeah. was mainly used to generate, to create town gas. Town gas, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which was widely used for residential, commercial heating and light, and also gave rise to the gas manufacturing industry. Yeah, because they originally used it for um, to street lights, yeah. gas lamp, gas yeah. lamps. You know, that's what they used to do. Now, the, and the thing, and then in 1913, German chemists Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch developed the Haber Bosch process for the industrial production of ammonia, which we've covered before, um, which accounts for half of all hydrogen produced today by st steam methane reforming. Okay, a more economical method, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, a method of hydrogen production, SMR, 
It was quickly adopted for commercial use by Standard Oil in Baton Rouge in 1931. Today, steam reforming using methane or natural gas remains the predominant process for, for producing hydrogen. Now, in the steam reforming process, they get natural gas and they basically get steam and they pass them both through very hot pipes filled with nickel catalysts mm. and basically the water reacts with the steam and cleanses the steam strips it down yeah, cleanses the natural gas sorry the steam cleanses the natural gas yeah i mean think about this i mean the steam reforming process is is the giveaway really because out of the two steam or natural gas methane which is flammable the steam or the methane well, everyone should know that um, everyone should know that uh, natural gas is flammable. flammable. So that this, it stands to reason that the hydrogen comes from the methane, absolutely from the natural course. gas, not the steam. Not the steam, yeah, because you can't burn steam. You can't, you can't, you, you, water, you can't burn water, can you? But the thing is, the main thing is that we can probably uh, conclude at the moment is that there's a link between all of these processes. Mm. There's a link between all of these processes, processes that have been developed in order to produce hydrogen. hydrogen. And that relates then to its name, hydrogen. Why did, and was it Lavoisier called yeah. it? Yeah. Lavoisier called it hydrogen for good or reason. Was it, no, or was it? Um, was it Cavendish? Cavendish. Oh, uh, no, he called it inflammable air. He called it inflammable air, yeah. He, it would have been Lavoisier who called hydrogen hydrogen. And one of the, it's, it's great to get to a point where you've been enlightened. And the fact is, is that we've now come to the conclusion that you can only produce hydrogen by using water. water. Mm. Hence the reason why it's called hydrogen, water former. But it should, you know. Yeah, but it shouldn't be water form former. Yeah, it shouldn't be water form. But this is why the name isn't, isn't It isn't spot accurate. on. It's not accurate, but you do need water. I'm sure we're right. You do need water to produce hydrogen, hydrogen. whether it's electrolysis, well, electrolysis, whether it's steam reformation of natural gas, whether it's steam passing through a hot iron cannon or an iron pipe, whether it's an acid metal reaction. Yeah. You still yeah. need, there's water present in the acid. And this ties in with our understanding of water being uh, uh, an element in its own right and it has the ability to break substances down, down absolutely of and course. decompose them which is why we consider that water is the only substance that breaks things down absolutely yeah it's the only substance that breaks things down uh, well you can have you can have oh but heat's not a substance really is it but you could also have um, something like sunlight. Someone would say sunlight. Sunlight, but that's not a substance. It's not a substance. It's not something you but can. Water actually... is the only tangible, tangible material. Material. Yeah, that would break something down. Yeah, it just it makes so much sense when you think about when you think about you know Lavoisier doing his little bit years ago. You know, um, he's using water to produce hydrogen. When you look at the steam reforming process. You're using water to make hydrogen. Yep. Now let's just just go on a. I know. I'm so, gonna... in other words, what? Why is it you need to use water to make hydrogen? Mm -hmm. Why is it? Yep. Why is it the case? Now let's just go on a steel making. I'm going to throw this one out. Throw you out a bit on this one. Go on. Just go on a steel making video. Video steel making. Steel making. I can go on here. You know, just rolling the steel through the for the processes oh okay still making what one of that this one yeah here? yeah wait i'll just yeah but full circle here there yeah it just is. as it's going through the furnace and stuff i'm not oh, oh wait there's, yeah oh there there's a bit there there are. yeah now our understanding think of the energy the energy that goes into making steel or any other metal come to think of it yeah Think of the energy that's involved. Whatever energy is, of course. But Absolutely. Well, let's put it in loose terms of the work done to something. Or the, the amount of, the amount of well, heat. Yeah, the heat 
the heat that's involved in this, the pressures, sure. the pressures that it's generated. Let's just go on the, the the as it comes out where it's rolled. Where it's rolled oh, should be here. Is yeah, it there. here? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Look at the pressures applied applied to these plates of all these ingots of steel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Think of the amount of pressure. Yeah. It's amazing. As a, it's, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And they're always compacting and compacting it into a much tighter product. Yeah, and thinner, you know. And so here so, we go, look at this, you know, I mean, this is... Yeah, uh, look at it, it's amazing. So what do you think water will do when it comes along and breaks this piece of metal down? It's In gonna, my understanding, it's going to release all the energy all that into making it. Absolutely, yeah. Well, it makes makes sense really when you think of it. Yeah, yeah, what, I mean, look at this. I mean, no, some of these some of these slabs of uh, steel are, are like a uh, hundred meters long, well, aren't they? Yeah. They're, they're, they are. Yeah, they're, they're, these these factories are, are phenomenal in length. In other words, what what I'm more like saying is that every piece of metal is like a stored piece of energy. Sure, basically. Because it's been manufactured. Absolutely, of course, yeah. And it doesn't exist in the natural world. Yeah, none, none of the... You won't find any metal um, existing in the natural world. Yeah. You won't find it. It's got to be manufactured. Factured. There we go, pause it. You might Just find an ore or whatever, of course, but, uh, you know, copper ore. Yeah. But if we can get up uh, an image of uh, iron ore... An image of just an iron image of ore. iron ore, because remember, Lavoisier uh, thinks that water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. Yeah, there you go. Iron ore. There we go. Some people Wait, would call it rust. Iron. Iron oxide. Oh, there you go. It's a bit small, but I'm sure you people rust. Can... Rust. Iron oxide. There you go. Lavoisier. If you get back up on his image of his um, Lavoisier. Yeah, yeah. This near uh, hydrogen. Yeah, the production. The iron pipe. The inside of the, the inside iron pipe. Of the iron pipe would look um, like that. Would be like that. Would look like that. The Voisier would say, and a lot of mainstream uh, people would say that the oxygen from the water is reacting with the iron inside the pipe to create iron oxide. This stuff. This stuff. But in our understanding, this stuff was used. To make, to make the iron Absolutely, pipe. of course, yeah. It, it seems, you know, I mean... So all you're doing is that you're just decomposing what you've made. What you've... The materials you've used to make whatever you've made. Absolutely, of course. Now, yeah, I mean, a lot of people probably think, you know, that... Well, well of course water's split. You, you guys are totally wrong. You guys are totally wrong. The hydrogen doesn't come from the, the metal or the hydrogen doesn't come from the whatever you know it, it the hydrogen comes from the water being split from the oxygen in you know that's where the hydrogen comes from okay now we've got just got a little diagram here of uh, um, uh, an electrolytic cell now if anyone has watched electrolysis happen you'll find that electrolysis you'll see the bubbles being generated at each electrode. Mm. You don't see the bubbles anywhere in between or outside around the outer perimeter. You only see the bubbles at each electrode. Okay. Now, if water is truly being split, okay, and you've got hydrogen bubbles coming off at the cathode, how is it possible the oxygen bubble goes over to the anode? No. Well, how is it possible that the oxygen bubble then appears at the cathode? Yeah, yeah, how, anode, is, yeah how is it? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, how you don't see a bubble moving across. You don't see you don't see a bubble appear and then it splits into two mm. and goes. One bubble goes to the anode and one bubble goes to the cathode. You don't see that at all. Mm. You just see those bubbles appearing at each electrode. Mm. You don't see any other activity apart from uh, each electrode yeah, you don't see any activity to make one think that the water is actually being split Absolutely. yeah that's the that's essentially the point you don't see any activity or any evidence within your, an electrolytic cell that demonstrates that water is being, being split, split. 
None you don't, whatsoever. None whatsoever. You Especially see. considering that the bubbles given off at the cathode are very, very small compared to the bubbles given off at the anode. Absolutely. Let's let's just have a little butchers. Uh, we can probably use later. Wait, there. Yeah, look, electrolysis. Here you go. Electrolysis uh, in action. Electrolysis. There. Wait right there. Oh, bubbles. Just put bubbles. 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 Electrolysis bubbles. Um, you could probably you use his one, can't you? His one's okay. Or you could probably, yeah. Come on, I'm, yeah, I want to get a good, be, good, uh, good video. Oh, there you go. You've got these water flow visual using electrolysis hydrogen bubbles. Now let's use, uh, let's use, let's use his. We've we've used this one before. This guy's got a little tub, electrolytic tub. Looks like a sandwich box, doesn't it? Yeah, he's, he's made it. Hopefully, he gets a little look at the. Uh, Hopefully he gets to look at the we get to look at the electrodes. No, you won't. I don't think we will, will we? Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. So you've got the bubbles there. See, there you go. You've got yeah. bubbles there. The bubbles are racing off from each electrode, but more so, but more so from one to the other because he's got no, more so from one than the other. Yeah, he's got um, he's got um, yeah, basically that's yeah. the hydrogen. Yeah. But but there's no evidence here that water is actually being split. Right. And no. you know you've got the water, and all the these two bubbles slowly merge in the water. One goes to the anode, and one goes to the cathode. Mm. You don't see that the bubbles are coming off from these materials. It shows to us that it's likely, more than likely, the the gas products are coming from the decomposition, um, decomposition of the the metals, mm. yeah. the materials in the water, water. Yeah. and or the electrolyte, because the electrolyte could be actually um what's the word could be attracted to the electrode as yeah, well yeah you know but uh you know for for anyone to think that uh you know you know what I mean, was made of hydrogen what was made of hydrogen and oxygen is is absolutely lack it lacks proof it yeah, lacks yeah. It, it even lacks yeah. evidence there's a I've couple got, couple of more things here what on here well timeline of hydrogen technologies and yet yeah. basically they're all doing the same stuff they're all decomposing. They're all decomposing uh, materials, materials using hydrogen, using water. water. Yeah, whether it's whether it's steel, iron, whether it's coal, or even absolutely. charcoal, 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 absolutely charcoal, coal. You know, they're all materials that are like like you say, the coal. A piece of coal is flammable. You can burn it. Mm. Okay, so when you come along and you produce your water gas, okay, by having it glowing glowing red and then you pass steam hot steam over it and then all of a sudden you collect the, the, the steam and you find that it's flammable you think you said well it's come from the coal is not it yeah how could it come from the water, water. yeah do you know you know what i mean a lot of people are like you yeah, know, i know yeah they 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 they're absolutely ridiculous the way they think but well, they so, might as well take penalties for England they may yeah, absolutely of course yeah no wonder why people we've got english players taking penalties like that you know and fluffing their penalties because the, 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 a lot of the english are just yeah no yeah you know but um they, i don't well there's not much here really you know grove cell i mean it doesn't matter where you look i'm sure we're absolutely right yeah. whenever you need in order for you to produce hydrogen, hydrogen. you need water. water. Yeah. Even the acids. Let's have a look at the acids. Here, Here we go. go. Acids. Here we go. Acid names. These are a complete list of inorganic and organic acids. acids. Even though they're kind of Absolutely. interchangeable. In so, some you, I mean, you've got yeah. acetic acid, an antimonic acid, antimonous acid, carbonic, acid, carbonous, acid, chloric, acid, carbonic, all of this stuff, all of it. But every single one no, contains... No, not every single one. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, every single one contains hydrogen. hydrogen. Every single one. Every single, single one. acid contains hydrogen. hydrogen. Even the inorganic, the organic ones, yeah. contain hydrogen. hydrogen. Mm. Yeah, but some globies, but some hold on, some globies, like chemi chemistry, science, night day hawk, day 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 hawk in day nightlight, flamingo, day flamingo in in dark. Yeah, yeah. He might say that um, um, that it's because they're all in water. That's why it's there. they contain hydrogen, because they're all in water, and the hydrogen's in the water. But you've got hydrogen chloride. 
you've got HCl, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid isn't technically in water because you can just merge the two. Oh, and you get the white. You, you need vapor, hydrogen gas, and a chloride. And a chloride, merge them together, and you and you can actually saturate water with them both. Absolutely, so which creates your and you got acid. Yeah, a sulfur dioxide in water would give you sulfuric acid, acid, wouldn't it? Absolutely. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to think that you know water. Yeah, you know, I mean, water. I can't, I can't really oh, I see know. how anyone can say that water is being split into hydrogen and oxygen when there is so much information that really indicates that water um, is used to make hydrogen. Mm. You need water to to release the hydrogen from certain mat from materials. So hydrogen really should be could be called hydro. Hydro, hydro, hydro gas, hydro, hydro formed, Hy water formed, water, water formed. No, hydro, yeah, absolutely. We've got hydro got ideas. How about hydrogen? Hydrogen, hydrogen, not hydrogen, but hydrogen. Mm. You know, I mean, but I mean, it's a great way. It's a wonderful way to actually under start to understand how hydrogen is actually manufactured. They use water, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the hydrogen comes from the water. water. Hmm. Especially when everybody should know that water decomposes materials. Absolutely, of course, yes, of course. Yeah, I think the water gas does it. You know, you're using coal, which is flammable anyway. Yeah. So that flammable property of the coal will be transferred along with the water, oh, yeah. along with the water. Hmm so that you can produce water gas. Mm. So how can it be water? Yeah. There we go, so we've, we've more or less done it. We've more or less done that, haven't we? We've more or less done it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, we've, we've more or less done, done that. But, uh, but the, so it really... And a lot of these acids, for just as an, uh, another thing, because we haven't really covered acids at all, really, but a lot of these acids contain oxygen. Yeah. And in my understanding, it's, it's only because they've all been heated. They've always had a process of heat, and I'm sure it's that process of heat that activates uh, the acid. Yeah, yeah. Let's just quickly go on HCl, because a lot of people think, well, hydrochloric acid oh. doesn't have any oxygen in it, does oh, it? Oh, hydrochloric, what HCl. A lot of would say. A lot of you chemists, mainstream chemists would say that. Well, where's the oxygen in hydrochloric acid? There you go. Well, no, I'll, you're just show you. I'll just show you where we think the oxygen comes from. Absolutely, of course, yeah. Here we go. Just to just scroll down. We've got a great picture of right, where yeah. the oxygen comes from. Yeah, wait a minute. Oh, where is acid. it? Where is this one there? Hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen yeah, chloride. Hydrogen Maybe. chloride. Is it not hydrogen chloride? Where's the... Uh, oh, there it is. There, there you go. This is... There you go. This is a flame inside. We maximise it. I'm there. This is a flame inside an HCl oven. And this, in my understanding, is where the hydrochloric acid gets its acidity from from the heat from the heat absolutely of course yeah and this is where uh lavoisier said that uh, oxygen was the the main constituent of acids because oxygen acid former and it's in relation to heat without the heat you've got no acid Absolutely, yeah, sure, absolutely. Direct synthesis, here we go. Uh, hydrogen chloride is produced by combining chlorine and hydrogen. Hydrochloric acid is hydrogen chloride in water. Mm. Um, so you got, as the reaction is exothermic, gives off, gives out an awful lot of heat. The installation is called an HCL oven or HCL, HCL burner. burner. The resulting hydrogen chloride gas is absorbed in deionized water resulting in chemically pure hydrochloric acid. acid. This reaction can give a very pure product, e.g. for use in the food industry. Mm. But it's the fact that these substances are exposed to high levels of heat uh, make them charged. Mm. And this is what gives them a charging or an activated kind of state. Mm. You know, and it's very similar to the, the steel. And water. The process of sure. steel, the heat that goes into manufacturing that metal and any other metal. Yeah, I mean, I mean, to be fair, I mean, a lot of uh, chemistry just doesn't e even cover or study heat because heat can be latent. 
Mm. Heat can be stored in a substance and released at a later, later time. time. Yeah. But, you know, who measures that? Who studies that in in mainstream science? No, nobody. nobody. No. It's cause oh, apart the, from Arthur C. Clarke. Oh, is it Arthur C. Clarke? Oh, mm. right, OK. But, you know, I mean... You know, there they you have it. You know, we've 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 had a look at quite a lot of information, and really, when you think about it, I I think it's it's basically. Oh, well, there we I think it's basically. You know, um, it's it's sure. not the jury's out. It's the fact that there's an awful lot of information out there already that does indicate that hydrogen comes from the materials that are broken that, down that by are broken water. down by, by water. water. Mm. Now, if you think we're wrong, you know, if you think our opinion's totally wrong and you've got an answer to the big question, you can answer the big hydrogen big question, question. Yeah. then feel free to join us in a, in a chat in um, Zoom or uh, Discord or... What was the other Telegram, Telegram, yeah. Telegram, 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 Telegram. Oh, wow, yeah. Like yeah, just just let us know, you know, just let us know, and we'll 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 uh, we'll yeah. ask you to for proof to mm. show that we're wrong. Yeah, you know, because I don't think anyone can answer the big question: Does the hydrogen come from the water being split, or does the hydrogen come from the materials that are decomposed by the water? Mm. I mean, we can't prove we can't prove that it, the, the 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 hydrogen, the gas, actually comes from the the materials that are placed in water. We can't proof but we don't actually put forward our view that we're right yeah we're only but putting facts absolutely we're only putting forward our opinion and it's a bloody good opinion when you yeah. think about it you know so there you have there it you know that's the big hydrogen question, question you know so let us know what you think let us know what you think drop us a comment below and yeah if you th if you think that uh, water is can be split into hydrogen and oxygen and the hydrogen comes from water then feel free to join us uh, in a Zoom or Discord or whatever yeah. meeting and show us your proof that you, you're right. There we go. Come and on. we'll basically tell you that you're probably wrong. wrong. Mm. Okay, yeah. so there we have in it. In our opinion, of course. Isn't it amazing that in 2021, you and me are actually putting forward this opinion mm. and we're still here saying that water's not H2O yeah. and that hydrogen comes from the materials. Yeah, three years and we've been doing it for three really, years yeah. and like it's 2021 and like it should all been done and dusted for for years a bit like the earth, earth the the shape of the earth as well you know oh well yeah yeah you know yeah, but at least you're not building a, a lego um a lego space shuttle, space shuttle yeah. oh of course yeah of course anyway so there you have it so thanks so much and always remember till next time if something doesn't make sense, like like water being hydrogen, oh, be, you can split. You can water. split water. Split. Yeah, split water. You can actually split, split. it into two split. separate uh, gases, gases, gas products. Yeah, hydrogen and oxygen. oxygen. Even though the actual process where you collect your hydrogen and oxygen doesn't really tell you that 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 is what's happening. Yeah, or or, yeah. or that you think that you can demonstrate to the lay person or to anyone that there's oxygen in iron oxide absolutely of course yes yeah um it's all rubbish, rubbish. isn't it of course mm. so thanks ever so much and we'll see you next, next time. time okay bye ta -da. the earth isn't round it's flat how do you know i've observed it in all my travels over europe it's flat everywhere it's flat